Hey, me again. I'm here on Island Del Pack on Martha's Vineyard. And I'm doing my next Ben's Wild Adventure episode about camelids. Like these alpacas you see behind me. Camelids include camels, llamas, alpacas, guanacos, and vacunas. And as you all know, there are two different types of camels. One humped camels and two humped camels. One humped camels are called dromedaries and two humped camels are called bactrians. The reason why is because a dromedary starts with a capitalized D and a dromedary camel's one hump is shaped like a capitalized D and bactrian starts with a capitalized B and a bactrian camel's two humps are shaped just like a capitalized B. There's only one species of one hump dromedary camel, but there's actually two different species of two hump bactrian camels, domestic and wild. The domestic ones are larger and heavier and have longer, shaggier fur. The wild ones are smaller and lighter and have shorter fur and look more similar to the one hump dromedaries. Now, there are seven different species of camelids. There's the one hump dromedary camel, the domesticated two hump bactrian camel, the wild two hump bactrian camel, and the llama, the alpaca, the guanaco, and the vacuna. And the largest, heaviest, and tallest camel ever stood 12 feet tall when, it's, when it lifted its head and neck up like this, weighed two tons, and had a neck four feet long. Now, the vacuna is the smallest of all camelids, only about the size of a man. And the domesticated two-humped battering is the largest and the heaviest, tipping the scales at two tons. And the one-humped dromedary is the tallest, towering up to 12 feet tall when it lifts its head and neck up like this. There are three different types of hybrid camelids. You can crossbreed, I think, a male one hump dromedary camel with a female llama, you get a comma. And you, you, you can even crossbreed one hump dromedary camels and two hump battering camels together, create a camel hybrid that has one long singular dome shaped hump. And you can also crossbreed llamas with alpacas. And I can't remember what the name of that hybrid is, but anyway, here's something else. Now, Llamas, alpacas, guanacos, and vacunas all live in South America. Camels live in Africa, Asia, and Australia. Now, the two hump bachelor camels, both domestic and wild, live in the high mountains of Asia where it can be very hot in summer and very cold in winter. The one hump dromedaries live in North Africa and the Middle East, and they live in Australia too. They were brought to Australia by people between 1840 and 1907, and some of them escaped and and, we're, and we're, we're released into the wild. Australia is now the only place in the world home to wild one hump dromedary camels. All the other dromedary camels that live in North Africa and the Middle East, they're all domesticated. Australia is the only place home to wild ones, but they're not true wild animals, they're feral. Feral means revert back from domestication to wild, so we should really be calling them feral camels instead. Now there used to be wild one hump dromedary camels in North Africa and the Middle East, but now they only exist in Australia and there used to be true one there used to be true wild one hump dromedary camels, but now the only ones that live in the wild today are feral. The, dom the domesticated two-humped battering camel and the wild two-humped battering camel are obviously close relatives and the llama is closely related to the guanaco. The alpaca is closely related to the vacuna. But the one-humped dromedary camel is the only camel that alive today that doesn't have any close relatives, which means, which also makes it the only species in its very own lineage. So the one-humped dromedary camels, the domesticated two-humped bactrian camels, the llamas and the alpacas are all domesticated. But the wild two-humped bactrian camels the guanacos and the vacunas, they're all true wild animals, which means the one hump dromedary camels, they're the only camelids alive today that don't have any true wild relatives. And camelids are all extreme survivors. Camels can go without food and water for six months, especially in the winter. They can lose 40% of their body weight during that length of time. So for a two ton camel, that's losing 1600 pounds. And when they do find water, they'll drink 50 gallons of water in 10 minutes. And they store 600 pounds of fat called blubber in their humps. There's a myth that camels store water in their humps, but that's not true, that's false. They store fat in their humps that they can use for food and water. And they don't sweat until their body temperatures reach 110 degrees Fahrenheit. If we got that hot, we would be dead. And they can go for ages without peeing. 
That's how they save water. And guanacos are extreme survivors too. All llamas and alpacas and guanacos and vacunas all live three miles above sea level. If we were dropped off that high, we'd start to feel sick and tired because we only have about 20 billion red blood cells per teaspoon. Now, even though a guanaco's heart is the same size as a human heart, a guanaco has 70 billion red blood cells per teaspoon, three and a half times more than we do, and their red, their red blood cells live twice as long as ours. So they've got thicker blood, which allows them to survive higher altitudes. All camelids chew cud, just like bovines and members of the kangaroo family do. What that means is they chew their food, swallow it, cough it back up, and chew it again. The reason why is because they eat grass, and grass is hard to digest. And to be honest, camelids, especially camels, will actually eat anything. Sometimes camels will even eat dead fish and sometimes even scavenge dead animal carcasses. Probably because camels live in the desert and no food goes to waste in the desert. And I like how a lot of camelids have big, big lower teeth but virtually no upper teeth at all. And their upper lips are like two little fingers that grab. And when they chew, they, they chew their mouths from side to side. As a matter of fact, all animals that chew move their mouths from side to side, even humans. Thanks again for watching. See you next time on another episode of Ben's Wild Adventure. That's a wrap. Anybody hungry?